Hey, Peter Buswell here from drvoip.com. Technical support, custom software development, voice over IP, cloud and call center, and we are a certified Amazon Connect service delivery partner. So if you have some needs for technical support or engineering services in any of these areas, please give us a call. Today, what we'd uh, like to focus on is a discussion about Amazon Connect with Lex. Now, there's another video that we've produced that talks about how to configure Lex in your Amazon Connect instance. This is not going to be how to configure Lex for Connect. This discussion is a little deeper. It's going to focus on a couple of different ways to implement a specific solution and in Lex we can either use intense or we can use custom slots and I'd like to show you two implementations uh, that achieve the same uh, desired result but one using intense will be a, a, a real mess and one using custom slots will will be very elegant and in the process I hope we all learned something about how to implement custom slots. So the application is a physician locator service. So someone dials an 800 number for example uh, that come into perhaps your call center and you know press one for this or say something and uh, get your call routed. One of the th one of the places your call might be routed is to an IVR system with a natural language speech processor like Lex up front, and it's going to ask you to speak the name of the physician or the nurse practitioner that you are trying to schedule an appointment with, and then it's going to recognize that name, and then it's going to transfer you off to the correct uh, office based on the name that Lex recognizes. So there's, uh, as I said, two different ways to do this, probably more than two different ways, but we're going to look at the most popular ones. And I don't expect you to uh, see the details in this screen. Uh, we will log into an actual deployment and see this real time. But in this instance, what we've done is to get the customer input and each of the doctor names that we want recognized by Lex is now an intent. So Dr. A, Dr. B, Dr. C, if they say Dr. A, we go this way. We're going to play a prompt. Please hold during the silence while we transfer you. And then here, we're going to transfer them off to the phone number. Now, in this implementation, Lex is doing this piece here. Lex is uh, doing the speech recognition for uh, collecting the caller's input. But here, we're hard coding uh, the phone number that we send it off to. So Lex passes the name back to the contact flow, and the contact flow uh, goes down a list of intents and finds a matching branch, and off we go. That's certainly one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to use DynamoDB to be a database that will host the doctor's names um, and also the phone number to reach that doctor. So the caller will speak the name of the doctor they're trying to schedule an appointment with. Um, Lex will recognize that name, invoke a Lambda function. The Lambda function will take the doctor's name as a primary key and uh, go search that DynamoDB database and find a key value pair that will return the phone number. Now, the benefits of this implementation 
are clear even if you can't see this call flow in great detail you can certainly see that it is significantly reduced in complexity here's your uh, get caller input and invoke lambda and then uh, transfer the call off so here we have managed to reduce the complexity of the previous configuration down to a few steps uh, it's a little more sophisticated. It's elegant. You're going to have to know something about Lambda, and you're going to have to know something about DynamoDB. But this implementation uses custom slots rather than uh, listing the doctors as individual intents. We list the doctors uh, as a custom slot. So with that preface, to this discussion, let's log in and take an actual look at this configuration and we'll look at the contact flow as well as um, the impact uh, Lex custom slots has on the contact flow. Okay, we're logged into an Amazon Connect instance and we're looking at a contact flow uh, that is going to prompt the caller to you know speak the name of the provider that you're trying to reach we might tell them that they can say the first name the last name uh, they can say nurse practitioner they can say dr smith dr jones dr eric jones dr smith uh, but we're going to take that feed that to lex our speech uh, natural language speech recognition and uh, Lex is going to parse that and figure out what intent and pass that information back to this get customer input prompt. And what you see here in this implementation, we're going to have Lex uh, speak intents. We've listed the doctors here as intents. So in Lex, again, this is not a tutorial on Lex. This is a tutorial on the difference between uh, using intents and custom slots. So in this instance, uh, a little play on words there, instance, uh, you have, as you do in all Lex uh, configurations, you're going to create some sample utterances. Uh, what can people say? What are they most likely to say to Lex. Now, since the contact flow prompted them to please uh, speak the name of the provider you're trying to reach, we're expecting them to speak a name. And the name might be Dr. Smith, might be Dr. Joseph Smith, might be nurse practitioner, uh, Jolene Jones. Um, and we've created those sample utterances here. And over on the side here, we've listed out the intents we want those utterances to match. So they might say, Dr. Brave. And in that case, it's going to match this intent. And <clears throat> uh, Lex is going to return that. Down here, it says fulfillment. It's going to return that parameter to the client. And in this case, the client is the contact flow in Amazon Connect. So if we go back there, we'll see that the same list of names that we had in the intent section of the uh, Lex bot is listed here. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. This will work. Um, but what happens if you have 100 doctors, 1,000 doctors? Uh, this screen is going to get pretty ugly very quickly. So here we've listed out uh, the doctors, and we come off a doctor intent here. Um, and in this case, we're going to play a prompt that says, please hold during the silence while we transfer you. Uh, I have found that to be a good thing to do because sometimes there is a period of silence between the time uh, Connect establishes the call out and the time the caller here is ring back or some other indication that the call is good. We don't want them hanging up, so let's, let's tell them there's going to be some silence. And here we transfer them to a phone number. 
So um, what I'm trying to point out here is that each of these doctors might have a different phone number. In this case, there aren't too many different phone numbers, but there are. Uh, each doctor will have a phone number. So as you can see, this gets pretty messy very quickly. It works. Guarantee it will work this way. On, but you're going to have to confine yourself to a very short list. So what's an alternative to this? What can we do here to, to fix this? Well, one of the things we can do is to put the phone numbers in a database. And that's what we've done here. We've created a DynamoDB database. The database couldn't be any simpler. It has a name and it has a, a phone number. That's it. To uh, a key value pair um, that's very, very simple. And a lambda function, the lambda function is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to do is pass the name from Lex to lambda. Lambda is going to use that name to index the DynamoDB table, and it's going to pop back the phone number. So let's see how that would look in Lex. In this case here, we're, we're going to once again set up utterances, and they're they're very simpler. They're very similar. So in this case, someone might say, "Is nurse practitioner name available? Nurse practitioner name, doctor name. Is doctor name available? What's going to happen here is we're going to replace name with something from." the database that's now going to live in Lex. So you'll notice down here that what we've uh, done is to create a slot. And in that slot, we have a variable. The variable happens to be name. And we're saying that get that information from this list of doctor last names. OK. So where is this list? If you've looked at slots at all, you'll notice that Amazon provides you a great many lists. I mean, everything from, you know, airports uh, to animals, artists, authors. There's somewhere in here, there's a list of American last names. Um, there'll also be a list of, you know, UK last names. Here's musical groups. Uh, they built these lists and they make them available to you. But in this case, we've created a custom list. And we did that over here. Now, you notice here that the intents, very simple. We've, we came over here, by the way, and, and we um, created a, a custom slot and we named it list of doctor last names very very specific i don't think anybody has any doubts as to what that is and you can uh, create this um, in one of two fashions you can have uh, expanded values or restrict the, to the slot values and synonyms so as you recall we had a, a database that we reference is only going to have a last name but chances are people are going to speak. Uh, can I speak to nurse practitioner Amy Jones? They're not going to say Jones. They're going to say Amy Jones. So what we're able to do over here uh, with um, synonyms is to put the various expressions that someone might say and the value we return will be the last name. So in this, in this case, if someone says uh, Mark Bingingham, uh, we'll return uh, to the client Bingingham. And that's basically what a custom slot is. Now, there's no getting away from the size of the list. All we're doing here is we're, we're creating a long list of names here in the custom slot uh, rather than creating them here as intense in the um, get customer input block. So you're still someplace that's going to have a list of doctors. In this case, we're going to have a list of doctors in a um, database, in the DynamoDB database, and also in our custom slot here. So people will call in 
uh, I'll hit the uh, get customer input block. They'll be coached to speak the name of the provider you want to reach, in which case we hope it matches one of these utterances. And we've left a hole here, if you will, a variable, which we call name. It's in curly brackets here, by the way, when you put it in the utterance. And this is going to match a name that's on this list. And rather than select the list from a pre-existing uh, list provided by Amazon, uh, I'm going to scroll down here just to show you. you. There, you can see here Amazon U.S. last names. We could have used that. Uh, um, chances are, the same names are in that list. But to have greater control over the synonyms, we elected to use this custom list. We created our own custom slot. So, what's the end result of that approach? The end result of that approach is that the entire call flow that used to look something like, um, let's make this a little easier to read. You know, it used to look like this mess. It now looks like this, very simple. We come in here to the get customer uh, prompt. It still asks the same question. It still connects to a Lexbot. Here's your uh, name of your Lexbot. And uh, this time it says use an attribute of type Lex slots. So even this whole piece is significantly abbreviated. And what we're going to do there is uh, invoke a Lambda function. So the get customer input block is going to pass that name to the invoke lambda function. We're going to set that uh, result as a um, attribute called iName, and that will be used to index the database. We're going to return from the database with the office phone number. Right, we're getting that from an external source, and we're going to pass it to the transfer to phone number. So you can see that there's a great deal of um, compartmentalization. Uh, the contact flow is going to be much simpler. You, as an implementation engineer, are going to have to do a little bit more work in the back end because you now have to create a DynamoDB table um, and a, a Lambda function. But the result will enable you to have this input and this output significantly reduced. And you can have a list. Um, that could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names long. So I hope that you have found this of value and of interest. And um, I thank you for viewing.